بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعا وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابا my dear respected brothers and sisters, I begin today's finale lecture with the Islamic greeting of Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers, tonight is an action packed night, alhamdulillah. I think we can probably do better than that. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, ya Darul Islam. Alhamdulillah, we are getting the energy back. It feels like the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And this is what it's supposed to feel like, Alhamdulillah. So, tonight, today inshallah, tonight we will be continuing what we left off last week in this uh, lecture series of how to become a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we talked about the characteristics of the wali of Allah and we also talked about the description of the wali of Allah in the previous lectures. And so tonight, it is a night to conclude from where we left off. Tonight is a night where we will be finishing up and we will, we, we will be actually talking about some of the tips of what we can do in order to become the Wali of Allah, number one. Number two, how we can please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah Tawbah, that وَرِضْوَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ That the ridwan, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest thing in this entire universe. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He ends that verse by saying ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ Meaning that if you get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the greatest success. Alhamdulillah, many of us, we like to measure success in different uh, terms and in different measurements. Some people think that, yes, you know, my child became a doctor, that, that means he is successful. Some people say that my child became a successful businessman, they have a lot of businesses in New York City, in New Jersey, everywhere, they, they are successful. But the yardstick or the measurement of success in Islam is that if Allah is pleased with us then that means that we are successful not only in the Akhirah in the Akhirah we will be successful but we are also going to be successful in this life as well that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless us from places where we will never ever even imagine and that is the main idea for tonight inshallah so let us continue on the tips on becoming the wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, first of all, the number one tip is that in order to become the wali of Allah, a Muslim, a mu'min, a person must increase the amount of voluntary acts being done. That if a person only just prays the fara'id of salah, they only just pray fajr, dhuhr, asr, maghrib, isha, and that's it. They don't do any sunnah, they don't do any nafil, they don't go that extra mile, or they don't go that extra five miles or ten miles, then obviously they're not going to get the prize. Because to become a wali of Allah, it is not easy. Many people, many of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the awliya kiram, they spend at least 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, constantly in this habit of working towards their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so that is why the number one tip 
is that you would have to increase the amount of voluntary acts being done, such as increasing the nawafil prayers. Then the question arises that how can I increase the nawafil? What should I do specifically? Well, I also talked about this uh, last week as well, that you can make a habit of praying 12 extra sunnah every single day. That you would pray two raka'ah before fajr, so, so that's two. Then you would pray four raka'ah before dhuhr, that makes it six. Then you would pray two after dhuhr, that would make it eight raka'ahs. And then you would pray two after maghrib and two after isha, and your 12 is complete. And the other thing is that our Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned in a hadith, that whoever prays 12 raka'ah in a single day, then they will be promised a big house, a mansion in Jannah. So subhanAllah, this is also another easy way to not only just get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also you will be able to get a house and mansion in Jannah as well. And the other thing is that these are just 12 which you can pray. Besides this, there are awabin, salatul awabin. Does anyone know from the audience what Salatul Awabin is? Let's see who's awake. Oh, yes? After Maghrib. After Maghrib. And how many rak'ah do we pray? Six. Six. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Very good. So, Salatul Awabin are six rak'ah that we pray after Salatul Maghrib. Does anyone know which Prophet used to pray this? Dawood alayhi salam, mashallah. Today the audience is on fire, alhamdulillah. Looks like they're all energized. <laughs> alhamdulillah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Subhanallah. <laughs> Alright, that's not, not, no problem, inshallah. Okay. So, this is in terms of the extra nawafil. Now let's talk about siyam, fasting. We are concluding the month of Ramadan, right? We're going to be praying Eid Salah very soon, inshallah, at least in a couple of days, in a few days. In the month of Shawwal, we're supposed to fast how many days? Six days, alhamdulillah. And what is the reward of fasting six days? You get, okay, yes, yes, brother? Alhamdulillah. So yes, if you fast six days in the month of Shawwal, you will get the reward for fasting for that full calendar year, right? So Alhamdulillah, this is also another way of getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other portion is that when you fast in Shawwal, it is much easier to fast in the month of Shawwal than it is to fast in the month of Rajab or in the month of Sha'ban. Can anyone tell me why it's more easier to fast in Shawwal and it's more harder to fast in Rajab or Sha'ban. Yeah, we just one month fasting. Continuation. Continuation, all right. But why is Rajab and Sha'ban so hard? Uh, you are fasting before and you are coming to fast. Mm -hmm. Yes, so the, the thing is that right after you fast 30 days of Ramadan, in the month of Shawwal, the the, the, the habit of fasting doesn't go away. Our body, it becomes used to fasting, which is why those six, they go by very fast. But when it comes to fasting in the month of Rajab or in the month of Sha'ban, that is where sometimes it gets a little tricky. And which is why some people have a hard time fasting. But there is another secret way of tackling this problem as well. And this is what the Wali of Allah also do. This is one of their characteristics. That characteristic is that throughout the year, whether Maghrib is at 8.30 or Maghrib Salah is at 4.30, they fast on Mondays and Thursdays. This was the Sunnah fast of our beloved Prophet Muhammad wasallam. He would always fast on Mondays and Thursdays and this would allow his body to become used to fasting, number one. Number two, this is also known as a uh, type of intermittent fasting. And there's also an article which I read about just before Ramadan. It was on CNN, this article. And they said that they did the research on uh, intermittent fasting. And they did the research on fasting like if you fast one day and then you don't fast two days and then you fast the other day. Meaning the Sunnah fast. That you fast on Monday, you don't fast on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then you fast on Thursday. 
So that research said that it increases your chances to lose weight. This is also a very important thing. Many of the people, they say, I want to lose weight, I want to lose weight. I want to get thin, get in shape. This is also another best way to get into shape by fasting on Mondays and Thursdays. Now, the other thing is that when a person is fasting on Mondays and Thursdays throughout the year, it's not Ramadan, it's just regular fasting. What, what, the thing that one person must do is that they should also increase their good deeds, such as reciting the Qur'an regularly, increasing their uh, time of Qur'an. So for example, if a person goes to work from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., when they get back home around 6 p.m., they should try their best that they can probably take out 15 minutes or maybe 30 minutes in reading some Qur'an. Maybe read 5 pages, maybe read 10 pages, however much you can. And also, many of the Hufad, and Alhamdulillah, I am also blessed to be one of them. Our routine after Maghrib Salah is that we also recite one juz after Maghrib. This is just the bare minimum. Sometimes we also do one after Fajr, then one after some other Salah. So we try to make it three. Because for the Hufad, it is mentioned and recommended that they should do three juz every single day. This way, in ten days, they have one khatma. So in one month, they have three khatmas. So that's how it goes. So the more we recite the Qur'an, not only will we, we get the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the second thing is, as we say in Urdu, keji rawani ajal. So you know how to read the Qur'an. You're more fluent in reading the Qur'an, right? So this is also another uh, aspect of becoming a wali of Allah. Now, what else is a tip in becoming a wali of Allah? Well, as, the, as we uh, look from the lives of the Sahaba, Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'een, that Hazrat Uthman ibn Affan, an, the third Khalifa of Islam, he was very rich, he was very wealthy. Can anyone tell me why Uthman ibn Affan was wealthy? What was his, um, what was his secret? Did he invest in stocks, in Bitcoin, in mutual funds? Or was he just a successful businessman? What did he do? He did something different. He didn't, he didn't just go the other way. He did something different. And that's why he got the money. But how did he get the money? Yes, brothers. Spend in the way of Allah. Spend in the way of Allah. MashaAllah. That is correct. Yes. So, when a person spends their money in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do you think there is a chance of any loss? No? Will that stock go down? No? Will you see that red dot come up? <laughs> that red numbers? As those of us, or those of you who are in the stock market and always watching and investing, if it's a bad day and the market is going down, you see the red numbers come up, right? But in the stock market of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will never find the red numbers or the red arrows or the red graph. The graph always goes up. As a matter of fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in multiple places in the Qur'an, that in حَلِيمٌ That if you give a loan, if you basically invest with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will double your investment. So let's say you start off with $100. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to double that investment. You're going to get $200 back. So, and I say this example all the time, that if you donate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hundreds, He is going to give back to you in the thousands, right? If you donate in the thousands, you're going to get back in the ten thousands. If you donate in the ten thousands, you're going to get back hundreds of thousands of dollars. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, we are in the month of Ramadan. This is the best time that if you want to give any zakah, you want to give any sadaqah, you want to give any type of uh, charity, this is the month to give. And you may give to anywhere that you feel comfortable in giving. So that is also another portion in terms of becoming the wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another tip on becoming the wali of Allah is that the wali of Allah, they help the people in need. Now, many people, when they are in need, 
they may come up to you and they may ask you that brother please help me with this uh, thing of mine or brother please help me in this portion or help me in that thing when that person comes to you and asks you for help what are three different responses that we generally as people or as human beings give to them i'm looking for three responses let's go ahead Mr. yes bro maybe and then yes or no okay yep that, that is correct either you say that yes i can help you or you say no i can't help you or you say you know maybe let me think about it yep that is correct mashallah what is your name by the way omar mashallah mashallah okay so the wali of allah they always help the people in need whether it may be financial help whether it may be help in terms of the emotions that if a person is going through a rough patch they are going through hard times at their work or they're going through hard times with family or if you know a friend he's struggling with his marital life you can help them out in terms of their emotional uh, need or help and so the other thing is that when we come back to reciting the Quran many people they can finish one juz in 10 minutes or maybe in 15 minutes right because mashallah they have a lot of fluency but if you ask them that brother you recited uh, let's say the first juz and it talks about how to um, it actually talks about the story of Musa alayhi salam and how they had to sacrifice a cow and then they used that cow to put it onto a dead man and then the dead man he stood up he stood up and he said you know that person is my assassin but if you ask that person that do you know about this story he'd be like no brother I don't know about that I just read 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 this is why it is very important especially as the wali of Allah that when we recite the Quran we don't just recite it just to finish and keep on reviewing. But we also recite the Quran and also read its translation and also try our best to understand its tafsir. It's what you would call deeper meaning. And also try our best to act upon the Quran and also on the Sunnah. Because that is what makes it easy to become the Wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a matter of fact, the Sahaba, Ridwanullahi Ta'ala Alayhim Ajma'een, many of them, they would not memorize some portions of the Qur'an because they would say that I always memorize the Qur'an, I memorize whatever portion I can, and I also act upon it. They would always act upon it and then they would keep forward, they would keep moving forward in the action of memorizing the Qur'an. And this is why it is very important that we should understand the translation and also try our best to understand the tafsir. When you understand the meaning and the translation and also the tafsir for that matter, uh, that is going to help in whenever you recite the Quran. Because when you know the meaning, then when you recite the Quran, it becomes very beautiful whenever you recite the Quran. And so therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will bless us in whatever we do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will also allow us to get closer to him and if we ask anything from him he will give it to us and also if we ask for refuge from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in anything then he will also grant that to us and so therefore for today inshallah we will conclude over here that these are just the tips that we went over and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow all of us to become the wali of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow all of us to try our best to try and act upon the tips that have been mentioned. And I also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to allow all of us to get into Jannah for those and also drink from the beloved hands of our Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the Hawitha Kawthar. And so, just before I end with dua, there is one thing that today, once we conclude this lecture, today let's make an ahad, let's make a pact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you know what, from now on, I'm not gonna. Diso misobey or disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to try my best to fulfill whatever I can. And so that's why let's make an ahad today that Ya Allah, we repent. We come back to you. That Ya Allah, we repent back to you and we come back to you. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya illadina amanu tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. 
So Ya Allah, we ask you for your forgiveness, we ask you to forgive all of us, and we ask you to make us amongst the wali of Allah. Let's conclude with dua. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam, tabarakta ya dhan jalali wal ikram. Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husna ibadatik. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab anna. Allahumma ja'al khair a'malina awa khiraha wa khair ayyamina yawma nalqaq. Wa khair ayyamina yawma nalqaq. وجعلنا من الفائزين مع الذين لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون كلوا واشربوا هنيئا بما أسلفتم في الأيام الخالية اللهم إنا نسألك إيمانا كاملا ويقينا صادقا وتوبة صادقة قبل الموت وراحة عند الموت ورحمة ومغفرة بعد الموت اللهم إنا نعوذ برضاك من سخطك وبمعافاتك من عقوبتك وبك منك لا نحسي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك وصل اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك